Hello, welcome to eMotors Direct Channel. I'm your host, Keith. Today, we're exploring variable frequency drives and motor compatibility. We'll cover which motors can be paired with BFDs and how to find the critical information you need before installing a BFD in your application. This video is for industrial maintenance technicians, electrical contractors, or anyone looking to add a VFD into their electric motor setup. Before we get started, let's cover some personal safety. It's a good idea to wear safety glasses and steel toes when you're dealing with motors and VFDs. And I cut off the power supply while handling the equipment. Just to preface this video, all motors manufactured today are VFD rated. Because it's now the standard practice, most manufacturers don't list inverter rated on the nameplate, which is one reason why we get this question a lot. To be safe, if your motor is more than five to 10 years old, definitely confirm if your motor is inverted rated, meaning compatible with VFD. VFDs have many critical electronic components stored inside their cover, so they require gentle handling to avoid causing any damage. If your VFD is currently or was recently connected to power, disconnect and discharge the capacitors completely before handling. The VFD's capacitors can hold a powerful charge for some time after being disconnected from power. This charge is life-threatening so it's important to take as many precautions as possible. If dealing with under 20 horsepower, consider using a NEMA 4 enclosure for more adverse environments. Make sure you keep your VFD in a clean, dry, heated location to avoid shortening the life of the drive. If over 20 horsepower, I'd suggest using an enclosure for those dirty, cold, wet environments. So what does a VFD do that's so important? Good question. VFDs vary the frequency and voltage of the power supply to alter the speed and torque of your electric motor. This allows the operator to match the motor's output to the demands of the load as efficiently as possible. To put it simply, VFDs control your motor speed, but not all motors. Variable frequency drives can cause spikes in voltage that damage motor windings, create high currents that overheat and damage bearings, and they can redirect current to the motor's rotor, creating excess heat that causes even more damage. Even still, you can find VFDs completing an array of functions across many industries, from conveyor systems and manufacturing to irrigating this season's crops. This is because there are motors manufactured to handle the high voltage and current produced by the VFD. There are four common types of motors that are compatible with VFDs. These are AC synchronous permanent magnet motors, which were specifically designed for use with VFDs, AC synchronous brushless motors, AC asynchronous wound rotor motor for situations where the power source is not adequate enough for a high starting torque and AC asynchronous squirrel cage motors. Over the years, we mostly dealt with the squirrel cage motor, and that's probably the most common. While these motors are VFD compatible, there are a few ratings that's important to check before installing your motor into the system. Some manufacturers will indicate if the motor is inverter duty or inverter ready right on the nameplate, like here. But even without this, the following ratings will help you find if your motor is VFD compatible. If it's not indicated on the nameplate, you could look at the data pack and contact your motor distributor to confirm. We get this question all the time, so feel free to leave a comment below if you aren't sure. Check the motor's insulation grade or class. Motors with class F or H insulation have enough protection to mitigate the high frequency voltage spikes from the VFD. The higher the insulation class, the higher the allowable operating temperature. The number one most common reason for electric motor failure is the bearings, and using a VFD can cause damage here too. In some cases, the voltage spikes can be induced into the rotor and exhaust through the bearings. The lubrication inside the bearings cannot handle the voltage and it'll break down, eventually leading to bearing damage. To avoid this VFD-related bearing damage, you can install an Aegis shaft grounding ring to direct any rogue currents to the ground. And for additional protection on larger motors, you can install an insulated bearing to the NDE end. These bearings have an electric isolation feature that blocks current passage. Find a full selection of insulated bearings and grounding rings at emotorsdirect.ca. Even if your electric motor meets all the criteria we have discussed so far, there's still a couple of precautions you need to take when controlling your electric motor with a VFD. All VFDs should try to incorporate a line reactor to absorb power line disturbances that can damage or shut down VFDs and other sensitive equipment. The cable or lead length from your VFD to your motor should not be more than 50 feet. If there's no mounting space near your motor and your lead length needs to be longer than allowable 50 feet, you need to install filters such as load reactors to help mitigate any voltage spikes. While variable frequency drives allow you to control the speed of your motor, there are limitations you must stay within. Your electric motor will be rated with a maximum and minimum speeds. Running your motor outside of these allowable speeds can lead to serious damage. While variable frequency drives allow you to control the speed of your motor, there are limitations you must stay within. Your electric motor will be rated with a maximum and minimum speeds. 
Running your motor below minimum speeds greatly increase heat stress, especially if motors are totally enclosed fan cooled. These motors have an internal cooling fan that spins on the motor shaft. As that shaft spins slower, so does the fan, reducing its cooling ability. If you intend to operate your motor below minimum speeds, an auxiliary cooling system or an in-quarter will be required. A motor can only go so slow before it can't sense itself, and an in-code feedback would tell the VFD how slow the motor is going. Generally, under 30 RPM, you'd want to use an encoder. Running your motor above maximum speeds will have you running into a few issues as well. The motor will attempt to draw more power from the VFD. This high current will lead to an overload situation and heat damage. As the speed of the motor increases, the torque decreases. At a certain speed, the motor won't output enough torque to move the load, causing overload situations and damages due to heat. And finally, the centrifugal forces on the rotor may become too high at higher speeds, resulting in vibration. The vibrations increases mechanical and heat stress on the motor's components, shortening its service life. So you can see that it's important to select a motor carefully for your VFD application. An ill-equipped motor can lead to overload situations and increased downtime in your operations. Selecting the correct electric motor and variable frequency drive setup will lead you to increased efficiency and a long service life. If you have anything to add, if you have any questions or you have a suggestion for another topic for us to cover, leave me a comment below. Make sure you like this video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. I'm Keith with eMotors Direct, your source for industrial motors, gear reducers, controllers, parts, and accessories across Canada. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.